tired of endless walking, not knowing which way to go. I collapsed on a streak of mercy. I was found in you. The throwing your arms around me, you held me like I was yours. Like you'd been there the whole time waiting. I was found in you. You were all I want. You were all I need. Every breath I take is a breath to say I am yours now forever. You were all I want. You were all I need. Every breath I take is a breath to say I am yours now forever. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's uh, good to be back with you. Good to speak the Word of God uh, in our hectic weeks, our uh, or sometimes fearful weeks, uh, we need the Word of God every uh, moment of every day, so it's good to share that this morning. Um, if you could turn in your Bibles to John 17, uh, verse 3, and we're just going to read this one verse, and we're going to jump off into many others, So, but we just want to start there in John 17, verse 3. It says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You know, there's only one thing, or there is one thing, I don't say the only one thing, but there is one thing that everyone seems to want today. And it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you've come from, it doesn't matter what race you are, uh, every person longs for this one thing. And um, that one thing is that they want to feel secure. Everyone's, everyone wants security. Everyone, everyone wants stability in their lives. Um, they need security. They want to feel like that life isn't tossed to and fro, that in their minds they're not tossed to and fro, that uh, life isn't a big sea that ebbs and flows with the waves, but that there is some feeling of stability and security. And so everyone longs for that. But the truth is the majority of the people never find it. They never find that stability. The good thing about being a born-again person or knowing Jesus Christ is that you can have total security. Matter of fact, you are the only one who has access to total security. And God has provided for that security. But the truth is that even though we have access to it, that we're the only people that can get total security, that many Christians still don't have total security. And I think one reason for this is that the church in general has become so focused on the now, so focused on the, our present place, our present condition, that we have lost our eternal perspective. And we have also lost the Word of God that reinforces um, that security as we read it. We've become so focused on the here and now that we have forgotten the eternal perspective that we're to have as believers. I was having a conversation recently, and um, we were talking about uh, some older folks that we used to know and the absence of fear that was in those older folks and and many of those people are no longer with us. But when they were on the earth, one thing that stood out about those people was the fact that um, they had this peace that transcended uh, the peace, or maybe the lack of peace that a lot of people had. But they had an absence of fear in that peace. And some would say, well, they're not, they didn't go through the things that we're going through. They didn't go through the pandemic. They didn't go through uh, the instabilities in the world that uh, we're going through. But... I know some of these people personally, and some of them experience death. They experience the death of their children. They experience world wars. And when the world was up in upheaval in ways that we haven't seen before, uh, they experienced the death of their brothers and their husbands. Uh, they went through the Great Depression. They went through mass poverty. And yet, through all that that they went through, they had a peace and a security about them that's really missing today. There is such a rampant fear going on in our world, and we can't excuse it away and say, well, it's because of this or because of that. It, the truth is, it is because people lack the security and the eternal perspective that comes from knowing and trusting in Jesus Christ, truly knowing what it means to be a child of God, what it means to be saved, what it means to be redeemed. Many people are just not secure. Those people that 
I remember being secure, having that peace. They had an eternal trust in the Lord. And that trust that they had in the Lord, it, it transcended the time that they were living in because they had this different perspective. They had their eyes fixed on something that wasn't their immediate surroundings. They had their eyes fixed on something that was of eternal value. It was something far greater than the here and now. If we have our eyes focused only on the now, and we think Jesus is only for the now, only to help us to get through this life, only to help us pay the bills on time, only to help us you know, have a nice home, only to help us uh, with our kids because they're acting up, then we become like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 19. He says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. And how miserable it would be if we only saw Christ to help us right now, right here, and that's it. When we have Christ, all of a sudden our perspective changes. It should change. All of a sudden, our knowledge changes. All of a sudden, the way we see everything changes because we have this uh, gift of heaven that's been given to us and now resides in our hearts. It resides inside of us. It, our spirits have been changed. And so we have the ability to see this eternal perspective. But we need to make sure that we look at that. We need to make sure that we use those eyes to see. With that eternal perspective, we can understand 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18, which says, For our light affliction which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And we got to remember that when Paul was writing this, he was someone who had been beaten with rods. He is someone who had been stoned almost to death. As a matter of fact, he was left for dead a number of times. He was constantly struggling, struggling with the forces of evil. And yet he is saying, for our light affliction that worketh in us for far more than what we could imagine. That our light affliction is working for us. And I think tongue in cheek is saying light affliction, but compared to the weight of glory, compared to what we're experiencing, compared to what we have been made into, it is a light affliction. But it doesn't just seem to be the case for many Christians today. But if we would keep our eyes on the eternal, if we would focus on the eternal, as a matter of fact, if we would study the eternal, if we would remind ourselves of the eternal, if we would live our lives according to the eternal, then it would overshadow the temporal. It would overshadow the times we're living in now. So we need to have a different perspective than the one we've been having. If we take our eyes off the eternal, we're still going to go through those difficult times. We're still going to go through the, the affliction that Paul's talking about. But the difference is, is we're not going to understand why. And we won't understand the good that's being worked in us. And we're going to start to become discouraged because it's all we see. Those old saints used to have a, an ability to see through the here and now. And they had the ability to see the eternal, to see the significance of eternity, knowing that their hearts were made for eternity. They were changed for eternity. Their spirits were changed for eternity, and ours are as well if we believe in Christ. So how do we have this security? We're going to go into it a little bit more. How do we have this security? The first thing is we need to understand the nature of who God is, and I think many people have missed today who God truly is. They've turned him into some magic genie. They've turned him into some uh, hocus-pocus person that uh, or God that gifts us with things. And if we have done uh, A, B, and C right, then things will go well for us. But if we have done A, B, and C wrong, then uh, we have made him mad and, and things are definitely going to go bad for us. But we have lost the knowledge truly of who God is. He is a God that is eternal. He is not a God that's temporal. He's a God that sees high above everything that we see. And he never changes. So we have the ability to trust in him because he is trustworthy. In Psalm 90, verse 2, it says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the sea, or the earth, I'm sorry, the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Before there was anything around us that was movable, before there were mountains, before there were rivers, before there were valleys, before there was the sea, our God was immovable. 
those things that we see are movable. We have earthquakes, we have tornadoes, we have hurricanes, we have storms. We see that the land side changes constantly. We know that God formed those things. He formed the mountains. He formed the sea. And those things are movable, but God in Himself is immovable. So our security isn't in the movable things. It's in the immovable. It starts in knowing the immovable God and the fact that He is God from everlasting to everlasting. We need to know Him. And in knowing Him, we find our security. Secondly, we need to determine to love God and count our lives as lives that need to be lived according to His purpose. And when we do that, we can understand that everything that is to happen in our lives is for the good. It's hard to, to see that truly and understand that. And we've talked about that scripture before in Romans 8, 28. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. So we, we hear that. We want to believe that. But it's hard in the midst of the trials and tribulations that we go through, the light affliction that we go through to really truly know that all things are working together for good. But we need to understand that truly that is the case, that all things are working together for good in our lives. Do you believe that? Do you believe that everything in your life is working together for good? Do we even know what good looks like? Because I was thinking about this, you know, what is good? Because I think our definition has become so, so skewed because to us, goodness just means that um, everything's going our way, that things seem to be falling in line with our plan, and we call those things good. But when we truly step back and we say, Lord, give me a better definition of what it means to be good, of what good is, then we get an eternal perspective on the good things. We understand the light affliction. We understand the tribulation. We understand the things that we're going through because what is really good is anything that is in God's plan. And so our perspective needs to change to come into line with His perspective. We need to determine to love God and understand He's working all things for good. Thirdly, we need to understand what was involved in God saving us. And some would say, well, you talk about salvation all the time, but do you really understand the process that was gone through to secure your salvation? And I mean specifically you. Because in knowing that, we understand the process, we understand the eternal significance of who we are, who God made us, and our position in this world. We're not uh, up and down, tossed to and fro with the wind. Our salvation isn't insecure with the immovable things of this world, but our salvation is secure based upon not what we've done, but based upon what God has done, and it gives us an eternal perspective. But He went through some great pains in saving us. And if we understand this, we're going to value what He's doing in our lives so much more than we would otherwise. But He has taken great pains to secure your salvation. And the security that we can have in knowing what those pains were, even when we don't feel worthy of our salvation, it still doesn't excuse away the fact that He took these great pains in saving you because it's not based on your feelings, but it's based on God's Word. The first thing God did, just going through this a little bit to make you understand or help you, help you to understand, is that God foreknew you before you were ever created, God foreknew you and He predestined you to a specific purpose. He predestined you to a specific end. In Romans 8, 29, it says, For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. So He foreknew you, He predestinated you to be conformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. And you'd say, well, I don't feel very much conformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. That's because you can't see the total picture. You can't see the whole complete process that God's working out because God's in control and He's in charge. The second thing is that God chose you. He chose you. In 1 Peter 1, 1 and 2, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, 
through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. So He chose you. He foreknew you. He brought you to this place of sanctification. And He chose you to go through this process to become more like His Son so that His Son would have many like brethren. He called you. He justified you. And finally, He glorified you. He glorified you in Romans 8.30. It says, Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. And whom He called, them He also justified. And whom He justified, them He also glorified. So notice that this process, it only involves God the Father performing these acts towards you, and it has nothing to do with your acts whatsoever. I think we get so hung up in our own acts. We get so hung up in our own sin that we forget that God is the one who created the salvation process. He's the one that called you to the salvation process. He's the one that's seeing you through the salvation process. If it had anything to do with our acts, then it would be an insignificant thing. But God did this toward you alone, Himself, without you doing anything. And the Bible goes on about what God has done towards all of us who are saved. In Ephesians 2, 6, it says, And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You know, it's amazing what God has truly done for us, based upon His Word. And what He's done for us, and when I say that He's glorified us, and He's made us to sit in heavenly places, that this is given to us not to puff us up, but in the midst of our trial, because we're still going to have these afflictions, we're going to still in this temporal position that we live in today. So we still have to go through all these things. So those things that He tells us isn't to puff us up, but it's to help us to understand our eternal position while we're on this earth. That ultimately, we have been chosen, we've been sanctified, we've been uh, purified, or we're going through a purification and a sanctification, and we've been glorified. But we won't realize that glorification, but it should help us in this temporal stage that we are in on this earth to know our eternal significance through Jesus Christ. Our eyes need to be fixed on the eternal while we're living here, while we're in this moment of time, while we're in the temporal. We need to remove ourselves also from God's saving equation and understand that salvation is His work. Yes, we accept Jesus Christ, by, by faith, and that's all we do. God has made the way. God has made the path. God has chosen for us significance. He's chosen for us a life, and we need to trust in Him. We need to be secure in Him. We need to be in secure, secure in what He's done, because it had nothing to do with, you, what, with what you did or, what, or with what I did but it had everything to do with what He did. In 2 Timothy 1.9, it says, Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. When you are going through hardship, and it seems like all your peace is gone, you can know definitively that you can have perfect security that you can be completely secure in who God is and who you are in Him. And you don't have to be tossed to and fro with the waves and the sea. You can be secure. You can have peace even in times like these. Do you really know who God is? Do you really know who God is? Do you understand what great pains He has taken for you? Do you understand if you have believed and trusted in Jesus Christ, do you understand your position in Him eternally? Because if you understand those things, then you can have perfect security in the midst of instability. He is your security this morning. Don't focus on what is seen, but focus on what is unseen. How do we have security? We don't focus on what is seen. We don't focus on the temporal but we focus on what is unseen. We focus on the eternal. And we have our security in Christ. 
knowing that he is our eternity. He's chosen us. He loves us. And we're called to him. I hope you have a blessed week. God bless you. If anyone needs anything, please reach out. Let us know. We love you and hope to see you soon. God bless you. Say I am yours now forever. You are all.